This video covers installing eMonitor for SQL Server. If you need help installing SQL Server, see the companion video Installing SQL Server for eMonitor. We're going to make some assumptions in this video. First, that you have already installed SQL Server or have a SQL Server available on the network, and also that you have eMonitor installation files handy. The method we're going to use to install eMonitor is simplified compared to the one in the standard documentation, which as you can see is stored in the documentation folder and then the eMonitor subdirectory. You need Adobe Acrobat or another PDF reader to read these files. The method that we're going to use in this video involves restoring a couple of SQL backup files. This is a simpler process than creating everything from scratch. To find these backup files, we'll go to the installation folder into the extras subdirectory. Inside there, we open database. In this folder, we see two .bak files, an eConfig BAK and eMonitor BAK. These are SQL backup files. We'll want to copy these to somewhere a little easier to get to from within the SQL Management Studio tool. So we'll just copy them to our C drive. Once we've copied them to the C drive, we'll go into Start, All Programs, and we'll navigate to SQL Server 2012, and specifically open the SQL Server Management Studio utility. This is where we'll do the majority of our pre-eMonitor installation configuration. Note the server name. We want to copy this to the clipboard and maybe even write it down. This particular string is important because eMonitor uses the string to connect to the SQL Server and we'll need that when we install eMonitor. So I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. Now we can just go ahead and connect here using Windows Authentication. It's a little easier than using SQL Authentication. Now the first thing we need to do is restore one of the databases. So to do that, we'll right click on the Databases folder and we'll choose Restore Database. We first have to tell it where the database file is. To do that, we'll click Device, and then we'll go to the right and click the Lips button, which allows us to browse to where our backup file is located. We'll click the Add button, and then we'll scroll up and simply just click on the C drive. Now on the right-hand pane, you can see our two backup files. It doesn't really matter which order we do these in, but we'll do the eMonitor BAK first. Select it and click OK. Click OK at this prompt. And at this point, all we really need to do here is verify that the database destination is the one we want. It will assume eMonitor. We can change it if we like. And then we click the OK button. It only takes a few seconds and the database is restored. So we'll click OK, and we're going to repeat this for the eConfig backup file. Since eMonitor requires two databases, one for vibration data and one for configuration data. You can have multiple vibration databases, but only really need one configuration database. So we've right-clicked on databases and chosen Restore Database again. We're going to click Device. Once again, we're going to click the Ellipse button and then Add to navigate to our C drive. Scroll up, click on C, and this time we'll choose the eConfig.bak. We'll click OK, and then OK again. And we'll take the default database name of eConfig, and we'll click OK again. And after a few seconds, we've successfully restored our eConfig database. Now, before eMonitor is able to use these databases, we have to create corresponding SQL logins that default to these two databases. If we just click through here, you can see under the eMonitor Tables folder, we have all the tables that we need. 
So all that's left really is to just create those SQL logins. eMonitor will use those login credentials to default to the specific databases that we've created. So we'll go to Security folder, to Logins, right-click on the Logins folder, and choose New Login. For the login name, for simplicity, we typically just simply match up the login name to the eMonitor database that it's going to default to. In this case, the actual name is eMonitor. So we'll use that name. It will default to Windows authentication, but we need to change this to SQL authentication so that eMonitor can utilize this login. When we select SQL authentication, we're required to provide a password. We do need to uncheck the Enforce Password Policy option. This will keep Windows and SQL policies from forcing a policy password change from time to time. Now the default database should match the login name. So in this case, we will set the eMonitor login to default to the eMonitor database. Next, we'll click on User Mapping. Here we need to check the eMonitor map button for the eMonitor database. And then actually, we are lucky enough to see a fairly common bug in SQL Server. Note that the DB owner option in the bottom was already selected when we clicked eMonitor. So I unchecked it and rechecked it. However, once I click OK, if I then go back into the eMonitor properties and then click on the user mapping page, for some strange reason, you'll notice after I select the eMonitor database at the top that dbowner is no longer checked. This does happen from time to time and has been a problem with SQL Server for years. If I subsequently then recheck dbowner and then click the OK button, then we go back in and verify eMonitor's properties again under the user mapping page. We'll select eMonitor, and you can see that dbowner is in fact now checked, which it must be for eMonitor to work correctly. So we'll click OK. We're going to create another login for eConfig. So right-clicking on Logins folder under Security, and then New Login. This login name will use eConfig. And again, you can use any name that you want, but we like for simplicity for it to match the database. Once again, we'll change SQL Server authentication as our default. And we'll uncheck Enforce Password Policy. And then we'll set the default database to match the login name. So we'll set it to eConfig. Now we'll go to the User Mapping page again. And we'll check the Map box next to eConfig. And note again that dbowner is pre-checked again, another indication that this SQL bug is still happening. Here to show you, I won't change anything. I'll simply click OK. And then we'll go back into eConfig, open its properties, and we will click on the user mapping page. And notice that dbowner is now no longer checked. So we'll recheck it. This time it should stick. So we'll click OK. And then just to confirm, once again, we'll go back in and make sure that our new DB owner setting under user mapping actually stuck this time. And it did. So that's good. So this is basically all we need to do on the SQL Server side. We're now done with the SQL side configuration, and we can move on to the eMonitor installation. When we open up the eMonitor installation options, we open up the auto run, double clicking the auto run executable. We're presented with a variety of options here. We have factory talk activation, which is required on any eMonitor installation. 
and we have RS Links Classic. RS Links is really only required when we're accessing data from either Logix or the 1444 series data collector modules or the XM series. So RS Links is really optional unless you need to communicate to one of these online devices. We'll go ahead and run the install for both, but we'll do it quickly just to save time. Finally, when you get to this screen, you click Next. We'll accept the user agreement and click Install. And then we'll finish with the Factory Talk Activation Manager. Next, we'll click RS Links Classic. It'll start the Acrobat Reader install first. This part takes a few minutes. Then we'll click Next when we're prompted with this screen. And then Next from here. And next from here, we will accept all under the user license agreement. Choose the default path, say next. And then finally the install button. This part can take a little while to complete, so a little patience is in order. Finally, at the end of the RS Links Classic, we'll click finish. And again, we'll say no that we don't want to restart now. So now that we've got Factory Talk activation installed, and we've got our RS Links Classic installed as an option, we can go ahead and launch the eMonitor CMS installer. If your computer has not had .NET 4.5.1 installed, it'll require you to install this first. This process will skip if you've already got that version of .NET installed. It can take quite some time. Eventually, you'll get to the license agreement page. We'll say yes. On a 64-bit operating system, you'll get this window pop saying that the 64-bit version is not supported. This is no longer true. We simply haven't gotten around to updating the installer yet. So just click the OK button and ignore that prompt. Windows 7 64-bit is technically supported. So we'll click Next on the System Requirements confirmation. We'll take the default path offered, and we'll say Next. We'll click Next here. And we'll just confirm the current settings and click Next. And the install continues. This takes a minute or two, not too long. And eventually, we'll be presented at the end of this process with a couple of configuration screens. These are our SQL Server connection parameters that we must input correctly for eMonitor to work. So that server string that we copied to the clipboard when we were connecting to the SQL Management Studio, this is where I paste that under the connect field or if I wrote it down, I carefully type it in. You want to make sure you get these fields correct. Username is going to be eMonitor because it's asking for a vibration database connection, and that's going to be the eMonitor database. And then we'll click Next. Now this page looks just like the other one, except instead of vibration database, it's asking for the configuration database credentials. It's the same connect string, so we'll type in the username of eConfig, and then the password. And again, we'll click Next. And at the end, it prompts us to restart. Normally, you would say yes here. But for the video's sake, I'm just going to say no.
I'll go ahead and close the auto run splash in the installation directory. And we'll go ahead and see if eMonitor starts up. Under all programs, Rockwell software, eMonitor will find the eMonitor executable with the little red diamond. So we'll select eMonitor. We'll get the product activation failed screen because we have not keyed in our serial number and product code on the factory talk activation. But that's fine. We'll operate in demo mode for the time being. And you can see eMonitor starts up and we can see our data history view. Join us in the next video for a brief walkthrough of eMonitor's basic feature set. Thanks for joining us.